So along with the new MMA architecture that this new family of electric Mercedes sit on, we also get some new interior technology. It's still the super screen like we've seen for the last few years from Mercedes and it's still got three they are individual screens behind this one panel, but they're better than ever, cleverer than ever, as Mercedes said of this car. So we've got approximately a 10-inch screen in front of the driver, then we've got two in this car, 14-inch screens. The passenger screen is an option in this car, and, well, it's pretty useful, isn't it? Because if you're the passenger, you can, you can go into all sorts of things. You can change the music, you can look at the weather, you can... Um, well, you can open the glove box and you can play games with an Xbox controller. It's cloud gaming, essentially. They're streamed to the car. But we saw earlier, you can play Forza Motorsport. You can play the new Indiana Jones game. You can play all sorts. It's like having an Xbox in your car, which might be a little bit uh, unsettling if you're driving and playing a racing game. But when you're at the charger, that's fantastic, isn't it? I should note as well that the driver can actually see this screen. Some manufacturers put a filter over it so you can't see it from an angle. I can see it. Mercedes says that the way that they're going to stop drivers from looking is with this camera here. It's a driver attention monitor, essentially. If you're looking over there, it's gonna tell you off. Quite how well that works in practice, we'll find out when we get to drive the car at a later date. So I said earlier how this is the cleverest Mercedes ever. Um, a lot of that comes from the artificial intelligence on board. It's got a voice assistant. Loads of cars have got voice assistants. They're not always very good, but this one's a little bit different. It combines several AI systems into one. So we've got Google Gemini, Microsoft Bing Search, Google Maps, and ChatGPT. And it's not just the regular GPT, it's actually 4.0, you know, the really smart one that normally you have to pay for. Mercedes has combined all of those into one virtual assistant. And it's still known as the Mercedes assistant with the Mercedes voice, and you say, hey, Mercedes, to make it listen. And it can even understand your emotions, apparently. It's up here. The icon is usually blue, and depending on your emotions, it'll change color, and it'll change how it responds to you. So Mercedes says, whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether you just want to get home and want the directions and nothing more. It can tell you about local restaurants, perhaps. It can give you directions to them. It can give you the contact details for them, or it can tell you how black holes work. At least that's what we were showing earlier in our demo. All right, let's give this a go. Okay, I haven't practiced this. Hey, Mercedes. I'm listening. What is T3 Magazine? T3 Magazine is a British publication that focuses on the latest in technology and gadgets. It covers a range of topics including reviews of consumer electronics, lifestyle technology, and industry news. Close enough. <laughs> so it works, it can answer basic questions in the same way a Google search would. So something new with this system is how it has a bit of a memory to your conversations. And Mercedes says it's about a one hour memory and as long as it, this all happens within the same journey. So you could ask it something, have a little conversation about a certain topic, then go quiet for a bit, then ask it something else, and then return to the earlier topic and it'll understand what you're talking about, at least in theory. We'll see how this all works actually, you know, when we when we're using the car in the real world. All of this adds up to help it feel a little bit more personal and a little bit more friendly in a way. And if the system can prove to work as well as Mercedes says it can in the production ready car, which this isn't, it could be pretty good. I'm looking forward to trying this out in the real world and see if it actually can help me. So I mentioned earlier how it's got Google Maps integration. And while this still looks like Mercedes Maps and Mercedes UI, it is being powered by Google. So that means the data is coming from Google you know, the location of things, the opening times of a restaurant, reviews of restaurants, that sort of thing, but also traffic. So live traffic information, that's coming from Google too. Now you can't log into this account with your Google credentials, unfortunately. You will need to sort of tell the car where home is and where work is and all that stuff your phone already has. But it means that once you have sort of told it where you live and where you work, it should work pretty seamlessly. And it'll have Google traffic, but it'll also have charge stops and it'll know the status of the battery and where to charge and when, the things that your phone can't do. There is still CarPlay and Android Auto if you do want to connect your phone, but we're starting to see now a system where you don't need your phone at all. You just let the car do it. And the great thing is that all of this is coming to other Mercedes cars using the new platform. And we saw a little teaser today of a few upcoming electric cars on this MMA platform. That includes an estate version of the CLA. It'll also include a new uh, seven seat, SUV and a smaller compact SUV. Now we don't know when they're going to arrive just yet, but they should be coming in the next year or two. 